Um, hey everyone, my name is Constance Young. Um, first, I want to express how thankful I am and appreciative to receive this award um, for my research project. Um, I would like to thank the political science department, especially Dr. Muller, because she is an awesome professor and she helped guide me throughout this whole process and introduced me to so many different research methods. Um, what inspired me to conduct my research on this topic was the idea that after, um, minorities, men and women, um, are disproportionately impacted by race-based hair discrimination, um, not only in the workplace, but also in educational institutions. And for instance, in my paper, I spoke about um, a young African-American woman named Chastity Jones, and she had these beautiful short natural locks, um, and she had an interview at a call center. And at the call center, um, the HR manager told her that her dreadlocks did not meet the grooming um, um, requirements for the company. And with that, um, she told her that if she, not, if she did not remove her locks, that she, would, that she would not be able to work with them. And she did not um, want to remove her locks. So with that being said, the, the HR manager revoked her employment opportunity. And it wasn't until fairly recently that the country has started to acknowledge that this is an issue that needs legislative action. Um, so with that being said, in 2019, um, the Crown Act was introduced, which stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. And what this law does is it prohibits um, race-based hair discrimination um, in federal housing programs, educational institutions, and the workplace. And um, so far, it, it has been approved in the House, which means that it's now being introduced to the Senate. Um, so it's only been really approved on a state and local level. Um, there has been a dozen of states that have accepted this um, or adopted this law. However, there were also many states that did not um, adopt the law or rejected the bill. And what I wanted to know was, what caused some states to be more readily um, to adopt race um, anti-hair um, discrimination laws as opposed to others? So with that, I took a case study approach and I studied the history um, of specifically three states Wisconsin, Texas, and California. And um, I wanted to um, study like the history of these states and how they may have treated um, similar anti-discrimination um, laws um, in the past. And I also um, compared them using a set of questions with the first question being, um, does the racial demographics of the state have an impact on whether or not states will enforce these kind of laws? And secondly, does the political makeup of the state have an impact on whether or not states will endorse these laws. Um, and with that being said, um, I, have, I hypothesized that the political makeup will be the primary indicator of whether or not these states will endorse these laws. And um, at the end of my research, I found that the political makeup of the state actually was a significant um, determinant of whether or not states will endorse these laws. For instance, California is typically considered to be a blue state, and they were actually the first state to adopt the Crown Act um, in 2019. Um, and Wisconsin, which is considerably, um, typically considered to be a more moderate state, although they did not adopt the Crown Act um, in the entity of the state, a county within Wisconsin called Dane County um, adopted a very identical law to the Crown Act prohibiting um, race-based discrimination, um, hair, race-based hair discrimination. Um, so yeah, um, if you have read my paper um, or if you plan to read my paper, I hope that you enjoy it. And once again, thank you so much.